Man TV on Chicago Hill. <laughs> yes, yes. Malika. Yes. What's up? What's going on? You got a birthday coming? Yes, I do. Ooh, wee. tomorrow. Sweet sixteen. <laughs> what the heck is going on? Yes. Man. Yes. Sweet yes. sixteen. I wish I could be sixteen. What were you doing at sixteen? Sixty, I was on the pom pom squad. I was. I could tell you got that fine <laughs> hair. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was just daydreaming a lot about where I wanted to be. I wanted well, to get out of school so fast. Well, you, you know what? I got to tell you, God has blessed you, mm-hmm. and I'm so happy that I can celebrate your birthday tomorrow on WVON. Yes, And we're yes. going to do a uh, celebration for you. I don't know what we're going to do, but we're going to figure it out. Hey, but, I'm, I'm, I'm just happy to be here. But we're on know. CAN TV, <laughs> Chicago Hill, FDR, Community Housing Foundation, and we have a special guest. I don't know who's the special guest, the, the mother or the son. But we have two special guests. If it wasn't for the mother, it wouldn't be the son. If it wasn't for the son listening to his mama, right. the mother, they wouldn't be here. They wouldn't be here. So this is here. just a great <laughs> opportunity to bring people together. Mm-hmm. Um, so if we really want communities to grow, and this show is all about communities growing. Mm-hmm. You know, we want people to be able to live in communities and grow them and buy houses. Right. And yes. and and so you got to pour into the youth because they're the ones who are going to be buying. They're going to buy or taking over property. So who we got mm-hmm. today? Today we have Freddie Golden. He's golden, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that last name is so fitting, isn't it? Yes. Like golden, golden child, the yes. golden boy. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and and we got his mom. And we have his mom. She is like the queen. She's the queen. <laughs> Raised a prince. Yes. Oh, how about it? <laughs> yes. We didn't, we, didn't, we, we didn't even rehearse that. And so, who's going to introduce the uh, prince? Oh, uh, you know oh, what? Hold on. Yeah. We, 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 we got. We, we're gonna we're gonna figure out who's gonna bring in that prince because the most important thing is when what this show is about on Fridays mm-hmm. is bringing forth positive youth yes. or youth that really need support. Yes, we've had some super fantastic youth yes. that have been dynamic, and I think that to dedicate our show to building up communities through the youth is what this is about. Yes, the youth that we've had on have been an example of what support and being poured into what it produces. Oh, yeah. Who, who have we produces. had a few? I mean, over the past weeks we've had... Uh, we had Sebastian You remember, because it is your birthday, <laughs> so you might not remember all the people. <laughs> you know, my memory is starting to get a little questionable. <laughs> no, well, she's thinking about who we had. Three one two seven three eight ten sixty. You could call us and help her remember. But go yes, ahead. Yes, we've had Sebastian Nalls. Who is Sebastian? Had, now Sebastian was a twenty year old that ran for mayor. Oh my God! Yes. 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 From <laughs> Evanston. From Evanston. Yes. Yes. We had Karan Patterson. Yeah. Um, he was running an organization to help mentor young men in high school, and he's still he's still a young man himself. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. We've had Kayan. He was martial arts graduate, I think, Howard. Yeah, he graduated. He was Howard student, yes. Yes, yes, and he's doing a lot of yeah. mentoring with, with the youth. Uh, I mean, we've had some... But we had that guests. one youth that was there that lost his father at an early mm. age. Yes. Mm. And he was fascinating. I yes. mean, he was the one that I said could be my son. But I don't have a son. Yeah, he was. I, I said he was my son too. Oh yeah. So we, did we had. birth a son <laughs> on, uh, on Can TV? Did we yes. have a baby? That's our Can TV. Yeah, you son. my Can TV baby mama? Because <laughs> we didn't get married, so. <laughs> Your Can TV <laughs> baby, baby mama. <laughs> so here we are. We got. We have a lot of babies. Together, just so you know. Yes, we yes. Are, we got a, we got I, a I tribe. Hope, I, I we hope, got a tribe. I hope the mom here tonight don't um, be offended, but we get ready to adopt her baby. Yes. And Let's as see. soon as we're able to um, bring this all together, mm-hmm. she's going to see what we're talking about. So, yes. But until they are able to come right on, who, are, who do we have? Just tell us. Well, we have with us Freddie Golden, who earned 
a million dollars in academic scholarships. And I know it was pe people reaching out to me like, I need to know how he did that. Like, yeah. what, like you know, people won the info. Like, how did that happen? So probably more than anything, they want to hear from mom. Like, I think so. <laughs> the queen, how did, how did she do that? Well, when I look at it, I saw, uh, I saw things like, Michigan State University, yes. Morehouse, DePaul, yes. Bradley, NC, Iowa, Fisk, Fisk uh, yes. Marquette, Hampton, NIU, HSSU, <laughs> yes. WI, JSU, and the mom is getting ready to bring on her son because look at her smiling. She's yes. a, she is smiling because she got a son that, you know, this is something to be proud of. Yes, and mom, it is. tell us all about it. Introduce your son and just tell us a story about him from birth to now. Wow. Well, thank you so much. Um, I am so excited to just be here with the both of you to talk about what community is. My name is Rwanda Cannon. Um, I live in North Wandale, do a lot of work. Um, in Garfield Park and North Lawndale and very, very passionate, have always been very, very passionate about our communities. Our family has been on the West Side, particularly in North Lawndale for six generations. And I'm excited to tell you about Freddie Golden, my son, before I make my it son. my son. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I am willing to allow you to adopt him because it does take a village. Yes, so thank I, you. I am excited uh, to that's our him. son. That's our son. <laughs> that's our son. <laughs> Sharon, I don't mind Sharon. But let me tell you about Freddie. So I am a mother of four, um, single mom. And I remember when they were very, very young, I told them, I said, you know, your lives will not feel any deficiencies or deficits or anything like that. Um, I want you to know that we are a tribe, we are a unit, and we all have a role to play in our family unit. And I remember um, Freddie just growing up, I think that, you know, he always had this sense of he was very, very calm, very, very even killed, the same kid that you, you guys will get exposed to today. He has always been that way. But I always think that Freddie has had a sense of civic responsibility uh, without even knowing what that was, right? It was just kind of inside of him. And I remember when he was going to, he graduated valedictorian of his uh, grammar school, which was Willa Cather, right on Washington. Um, Washington and uh, what is that, Holman or Sacramento, whatever, the, Sacramento, I believe, right? And I remember Freddie graduated from Cather. He had done very, very well, tested very well, got into all high schools all over the city. And he intentionally told me, he said, I don't want to go to any school outside of my community. Amen. I want to prove that good things can come out of North Lawndale and good people can come out of the west side of Chicago, just like you, mom. You're great. Awesome. I want to show that, you know, black men and youth, we, we don't have to go anywhere else. We don't have to leave our community to show that we're amazing. You know, it's happening. I see it. And I was a little apprehensive because I was just like, I hear what you're saying, but the elements. <laughs> and yeah, he, you know, it is me, tough, you know mom. I mean? Mom, it's that, tough. you know, I, I don't want to interrupt your flow, no, but no. I would like for you to tell us about this element in Lawndale. Yes. You didn't leave. I, you're still there. But no. the element that you have to deal with and struggle with for your son and your Absolutely. children absolutely it's very real i mean like to the point i was having dinner with someone last night and we were talking like i want to get a doggy so bad i want a dog for my family and my children so bad and that may not mean anything to you all right now however i panic a little bit because if i got a dog my young black boys are going to have to walk the dog and my concern that they leave my house and just walk down the alley or walk down the street to walk to the park to walk the dog, my heart beats. Mm -hmm. When I look at the Citizens app, all the things that are happening in our community from violence to police to racism to all of those things, it stops me from just having an enjoyable life and just having something as basic as a doggy. I have not, and I have refrained from that 
because of that. And that's just an example, right? So when Freddie said that he wanted to stay and go to school in our community, I had that same type of thing. Okay, well, if he leaves the house, he's going to have to walk down the street or am I going to have to drive him to school every day? because of the dynamics that happen in our community, whether there are shootings, whether there are muggings, whether there are, you know, and kids pick on kids, adults pick on, you know, it's just, there's a lot of things that we face that are not happening in other communities. And it's unfortunate, um, but that was an apprehension that I had when he said that he wanted to go to a neighborhood school and things are just very, very different than what they were when I was, when we were growing up in the, you know, and I mean, but granted, I didn't go to a neighborhood school. I went to school way up North for the same reasons. My mother um, had those same so, convictions. So that's so. amazing, Malika, mm -hmm. for generations. Not yes. only did, did you have to go outside of your community to go to a school that was uh, acceptable to help you yes. become who you are today. Then generations later, your children have to go to a school outside the neighborhood or be forced to stay in and deal with the conditions to be the best that they could be. So Absolutely. How it's tough. How did it's you tough. how did you protect him? How did you how did you keep him safe from from the elements? What did you do every day or what did you tell him? If, if I'm honest, I just prayed and asked God to cover him. You know what I mean? There wasn't, I, and I also believe that Freddie, you know, is responsible. I, I am his mother, but Freddie is responsible for his own life and his own convictions. I know what my leaning into my convictions have done for me in the past mm -hmm. that it has led me down. And so I had to trust that the same God that I trusted in, who to guide me would be the same God that Freddie would trust in to guide him. You know, and that's just the honest truth. It was a, I mean, but I had a praying grandmama and a praying mama. <laughs> well, <laughs> so enough of you, enough of you, mommy. Bring <laughs> on Freddie. That's this yes. show is about the youth, and I want to yes, hear, please. we want to hear from Freddie. <laughs> yes, please. So introducing my son, Freddie Golden. He is now a senior at North Lawndale College Prep and has done amazing things and i'm gonna let him come on i will say before he joins i'm so proud because um from freshman year to now uh freddie has all a's and a pluses on his report card he is now number one in north Le north Lawndale college prep and i'm excited to introduce him so that he can share his own personal story and journey freddie freddie it's on you my man let's go <laughs> freddie Freddie Man, you know what, Malika, before Freddie talks, Freddie I ain't never got all A's. Me neither. The heck is, <laughs> you know, I ain't never got all A's, Freddie. Lord, you, the, the sky's the limit for you, my man. Thank you. You know, and I only yes. got accepted at like two schools. <laughs> you know, I know you don't know where to start, but I need you to just name the schools. I named them a few times, but there are some schools that you might want to name. What are the schools that you got accepted at? So, um, just looking back, I've got accepted to schools like Marquette. Um, we have Fisk, Bradley, NIU, uh, the New York Institute of Technology, um, DePaul, uh, Hampton, Morehouse, uh, Alabama A&M, just different schools like that. Just It's, it's a cover, but... Yeah, that's, those are more like my top ones. Well, hey, well, you know, I got to ask you, this between you and me, my man, between us men, <laughs> which school have the hottest girls that you looking at? Uh, no, mom no. ain't trying to hear that. <laughs> now, which she one has got the hottest girls that you got she your eyes on? She don't want him thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> you can oh, tell oh. me, just between us now, ain't nobody, it's just us talking. I, I visited a couple of schools. Um, at the moment, Morehouse is my top choice. There ain't no girls at Morehouse. It's 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 Spelman, but Spelman right is the across the street. <laughs> <laughs> at Morehouse, I don't blame you, Morehouse. You know who went to Morehouse? My hero. I think Dr. King went there. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna tell you, and you on you you know what, mom? You got a son that's got his head on. I talk about girls. He talking about education. You 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 winning. Go for it. Keep going, my man. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. He's well, got yeah. he's got vision. He's got because vision. Because 
for a young man to say, I'm going to stay in the community because I want to prove something to the community that something amazing, powerful can come out of the situation. I mean, how many kids are thinking like that? You know, they don't. I mean, in <laughs> That's fact, a vision. That's a when we were growing up, it's like them white schools are where, we, you know, it's just so, I mean, you should be commended. And I'm going to tell you, mm -hmm. the, the future is going to be brighter because of you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But, but you know, what's the biggest challenge that you see as a citizen of America? You know, not just as a black person, but as a young person. What's your yeah. biggest challenge? Um, I think my biggest challenge is just growing up, being that black man, having to come into the role of being a man uh, in a nation that was kind of built on the foundation of racism and oppression, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So uh, I just feel like it's a, it's a big, I have to grow into myself as a black man. And I feel like I, I'm, I'm getting to that point and I, I feel the pressures of, um, you know, just the systematic racism, just different things that go around in my community that I, I want to have control of, but I don't always have control of. What, what, do you, so, what don't you have control of? Help um, people understand how to see you as a, as a citizen, as a productive citizen, not just as a black person. Just see me as you see my peer that may mm -hmm. be lighter than me, that may have different hair than me, that may live right. in a different community. That's what you want, right? Right. Um, in different communities, uh, in my community, we don't have as many resources as a community, uh, say, like in the suburbs, like a school in the suburbs, they might have... Um, um, a different budget for their kids that we just don't have. And this limits our resources and um, just our, the things that we have accessible for us to really uh, thrive in our community um, and in our school. So I just, I, what I do with this information, I just take the positive. I look at what I do have instead of what I don't have. Did you hear that? I, that, now that, I, just, that I think that people need to, we got to, Malika, we got to make sure that we let people hear what he said. He's, he's, not, he's not making any excuses. Any excuses. Now, now, his mom already told us that Lindale, North Lindale, where they live, have many challenges. Mm -hmm. And then you have a young man that has already started in the negative, not because his mother or his family, but because the color of his skin. And he's telling us, I already know that suburban schools have more resources than me, but it doesn't matter to me. I'm going to make it. Exactly, exactly. And he, he seems to understand choices oh. very early on. Like, he, he made some good decisions early. Malika, that's pretty powerful <laughs> that, that you bring out the fact that he understands choices because understand that's what it choices. comes down to. Yes. You know, I'm going to accept the mm -hmm. choices. I'm going to make the decisions, and it's my decisions and my choices that's going to make my life. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I also exactly. think that, you know, mm -hmm. I, I growing up or watching Freddie grow up, um, I, there was one pivotal moment, and Freddie, I want you to share about this, and we talked about this on a few college visits, about, and I think this was probably a turning point when it came to the choices. I remember taking Freddie and his friends to one of their peers' funeral. He had gotten shot, and um, the things that Freddie told me about that moment and choices and what it meant to him and who he wants to be. Freddie, can you just lean into that a little bit and just kind of tell everybody kind of what happened and how it shaped a little bit? Some of the same things you shared with me, I think that yeah, might so, um, Like my mom said, I went to uh, Cather Elementary and um, while I was going to the school, I met a, a close friend that I played basketball with. I played basketball and uh, his name was Devonte Jackson. Um, while I was in the same space room, I could tell that he he wasn't led in the right way. He wasn't given the the exact same role models that I was. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he was going down the wrong path. Um, and just days before he started his freshman year, he was shot. And uh, that just I, when I saw that, it was just we we're coming from the same place, um, in the same school, same neighborhood, and it's just. He, he, he was shot days before his freshman year. He didn't even get a chance to go into high school. So it was just, it really affected me um, in a way to say that I want to be that role model for young kids when I grow up so that they don't have to lose their life uh, because they don't have those positive influences. You know what I'm saying? 
uh, I don't want kids to go down a bad path or or uh, feel like that they have to uh, make bad decisions because they don't have anybody there for them. You know what I'm saying? I, I just I, I want to be that person for the youth, and I seen that in Devon in Devonte, and that's the message that I got from that. Well, the one thing I, that uh, the one mom. thing that Freddie told me was he said um, he said. The thing is when role models are there, but a lot of times they are outside of our community coming in to give conversation and kind of all of that. Um, he said he wanted to show that you can grow up right here. Well, and well the question it. is, what's well, a role model, Malika? Well, he didn't have to look past the front door for his role model. He had a mother <laughs> praying for him. and Well, but kids don't <laughs> see mothers and fathers as role models. They too should. Much. But what is a role model, Malika? What do you oh, think of a role model? Because I really role- want to hear um, Freddie's definition of a role model. To me, a role model sets an example, a very positive example. It doesn't matter if, it's, if they're rich, poor. They just set a powerful example. That's what to a role me, model is. To me, that's what a role model is. And, and, is, and but. so, but I think what's more important about it, this show, is what does Freddie think a role model is? Yes. I know. I know what a role model is, and I know the role model is not Charles Barkley. <laughs> to some people. <laughs> hey, remember? Oh, see, Freddie don't know what we're talking about, but Mom knows, <laughs> and you know, because Mom, what did Charles say? I'm not a he role model. <laughs> so, Freddie, what is a role model? A uh, role model to me, uh, I kind of agree. Uh, a role model is some somebody that you can uh, model your life after, uh, somebody that you can really look up to uh, in terms of the fact that uh, I want to be where he is or I want to be where they are at, at that moment. You know what I'm saying? Um, I feel like a role model is more, uh, is more impactful when they come from your community. You know what I'm saying? Because you can relate to that person. You can relate to them. You could say, oh, he came from the same place I come from. I have no excuse not to make it where he is right now. Yeah. That's 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 what a role model is to me. Well, you are a role model. Let me tell you why you are a role model. Because there are so many people like you that don't understand the struggles of living on the west side, living on the south side, living in any urban community, and you've proven that you can make it. You've made it. Because you're getting ready to get in circles that many of them don't even understand what it's like. He's made it because he has a lot of choices. Oh, did he? Oh, he, <laughs> but he, <laughs> he, they didn't choices. come easy. They didn't, they come, didn't come easy. Yeah. No, you Tell earned us about it. That. Yes, you earned. And I think that it. I think that's the thing too. Um, when I when I posted that um, kind of image of Freddie. And I, Freddie, I would love for you to talk about because there's peer pressure to be social. There's peer pressure to stay up late at night. There's peer pressure to stay on video games. I watched Freddie live through this and not just make choices outside, but make choices inside the house every day. And Freddie, can you just unpack that a little bit? I don't mean to interview. You no, mom, interview. that's good but because <laughs> being being Freddie is not easy, mom. Because Freddie could have easily chosen a different path, and I'll talk to you guys about a different path of a 16 year old that was killed in Woodlawn because he didn't follow the love of his mom. But go ahead, Freddie. Yeah, um, so when I was, I chose to stay inside my community and go to North Lawndale coming out of my elementary school, I knew that it was gonna be a tough task. I knew about the peer pressure that I was gonna receive. My main goal, my main focus was to dodge all that peer pressure and to get to where I am right now. So I had to work to do, I knew that it was gonna require work. I knew that it was gonna require work ethic. It was just, it was just how I was gonna take that. I, I made it a point in my mind. I said, I'm going to move past all these distractions. I know what community I live in. I know that we're not given as much resources, but skip all of that. I'm going to make it a point to get past all of that and do my best or uh, get, do the best that I can, be my best self in every situation. Um, I, I just made it that point uh, from freshman year, and since then I've just been uh, getting like all A's. Um, I've joined many programs that have uh, uh, like the Peace Warriors, where we exemplify the message of uh, Martin Luther King and his nonviolence, and we spread that across uh, the uh, city of Chicago. So just just different things like that. I just join clubs. I stay in the right mind frame. I even when I'm slipping off, I always catch myself. Did, say, like, did you hear that? 
Mm-hmm. He knows when things may not be going right, and I catch myself. Freddie, that's critical. That's an old spirit. That's an old spirit. You've been here before. Because everybody <laughs> slipped. And I didn't mean to cut everybody. you off, but the fact yeah. that you recognize that this isn't right, I got to pull myself back. Right. That's great. And you've been, um, God is blessing you. Thank you. So, so how did the scholarships, you know, you have a lot of parents, they were on yeah. social media, like looking like, so tell us, you got to tell us how that came about, how that happened. Cause there's a lot of parents yeah. researching right now. How, well, how much you get? A, a million. A million dollars. Oh. All right. <laughs> Can I borrow right. some money? <laughs> Is that in your pocket right now? You got a bank account with that money? I just need to know. You buy your mama a new house with that money? What you do? <laughs> so, uh, I was saying... That needs to be a law, by the way. So I'm just saying, put that out there. Who passing bills? I'm just saying. I got you, Mom. Uh, so, I would say, just from... It, it has to start early. It has to start from freshman year. Uh, from freshman year, I made sure that my transcript was perfect. Any college I went to, I, I made sure that they couldn't deny me. That I, I made sure that I was impeccable, no matter my circumstances, no matter where I'm from. I made sure that I was impeccable. Like when they see me, they're gonna see whatever they see anywhere else. The 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 best of the best. You know what I'm saying? So I I just made sure from the beginning, for freshman year, all A's. Freshman and year. I, yeah. When I got to junior and senior year, um, I knew that my SAT scores were gonna be important to get to college and I knew that uh, I just had to apply from that point. So <laughs> once you start early, you can set yourself up for future success. You know what I'm saying? And when I started my SAT, I studied for, I studied for like once the SAT came, we had an SAT boot camp. I studied for a week straight just so I can get that. It could be no place where people could question my character. Like they could say, if I had all A's and a bad SAT score, people could be like, oh, he has good grades. Maybe he isn't challenged enough. Um, uh, the SAT score is bad, so he he isn't performing as well as other people across America. But I, I made it a point to where I, I'm gonna get this high SAT score, so nobody could question my character even in, in that aspect. So it's just start from the beginning. Get build your build your resume, build your transcript, get your SAT score where it needs to be, and then at that point it's just applying. You have to apply, put your best foot forward. When it comes to essays, put your best foot forward. When it comes to uh, just the college application, telling them everything that they need to know about you. Join clubs like the Peace Warriors that really show your uh, your your heart when it comes to uh, supporting your community and supporting people around you. Just join clubs, start early, uh, make sure that SAT score is good, and the scholarships will just flow in from there. Man, yeah. look at him. I know. Were were any books given to you? Like, who who were some people that you may have read who fed all this into you? I mean, other than your mom, but were there right. books that you read? Um, Malcolm X, Luther, uh, Martin Luther, Luther King, <laughs> Martin Luther King Jr. Luther Vandross. <laughs> he don't know nothing about no Luther Vandross. <laughs> Now. <laughs> oh, your, oh, your mom would be playing Luther Vandross. I get it. <laughs> All right. But uh, to your yeah, point, to Malika's point, yeah. what, how did you get this? this uh, are you a first-generation college student, or are you your mom? How, how did this happen? Oh, uh, yeah. My, my mom, she went to college, um, and my, my sisters, I have two two older sisters that went to college, too, so they're a big inspiration to me as well. All right. We, we, you know what? We're getting ready to go. Uh, we have 30 seconds. We need you, mom, to praise your son. Son, <laughs> praise your mom so we can close out. You guys got 10 seconds to praise each other. Praise. Thank you. Go for it, mom. Go pra- I'll let praise. I'll finish, mom. Freddie. So I, I'm just, I'm excited about Freddie. He's amazing. The things that he said, I did not help Freddie do any of this. He decided. He was up two, three, four o'clock in the morning, sometimes putting in application after football and basketball practice and all of that. He was just determined and I'm excited to see his fruit. Praise mama. <laughs> yeah, and I, I just I wouldn't be able to do anything without her. She's my big inspiration. Uh the reason why I do most of the things that I do on a day to day basis. So I just without her, it's no me. Hey, that's what you parents and students, you gotta know we in it together. We got another son. <laughs> This is Chicago (laughs) Hill. Congratulations, (laughs) Freddie and Mom. We'll see you guys next week. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you.